This is Dan from Tides of Man, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. Hey, this is Alan from Tides of Man, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. Hey, this is Spencer from Tides of Man, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. Alright, so I'm going to walk you through uh, my touring rig for the last few tours that we've done. I'll start out with this guitar. It's a GNL Tribute Series Legacy, basically a Strat style guitar. Um, it's completely stock. The story behind this guitar is me and Spencer, our other guitar player, uh, found it in Guitar Center. It's 450 bucks. Uh, spur of the moment we decided to pitch in for it because we played it there and it sounded awesome uh, plays really nice and it's become my main guitar uh, when we play live um, one of the cool things about this guitar that makes it a little different than a strat is instead of two tone knobs this knob is a bass cut uh, which helps a lot when you're playing in different venues and the sound's a little different everywhere. It's nice to be able to dial out some low end, some boominess so that you can cut through. Um, I actually use that a lot. Um, other than that, there's not too much to say. It's a, it sounds really nice. Um, the other guitar that I'm going to be using on uh, future tours is I have a Gibson Faded SG Special from like 2007 and uh, just got brand new Seymour Duncan. Uh, Seth Lover PAF pickups installed and I'm waiting to get it back from the shop but super excited to be able to play that and uh, that'll be a nice contrast to humbucker guitar and then I got the single coils with this one um, from there I'll roll into my pedal board um, pedals are super straightforward uh, rolling into the boss tuner and I would like to point out that I'm very proud of this tuna sticker because it is a tuna. <laughs> and then, uh, so it goes straight into the Moor Tender Octaver, which is an awesome little pedal. Um, tracks beautifully for, uh, you know, upper and sub octaves. Um, works great with chords. Never have a problem with that pedal. It's awesome. Uh, I use it on a lot of leads um, just to like, give them like a big epic feeling. From there, um, using the Zvex Distortron, but I use it, Don't I don't really use it as a distortion pedal, I use it as like a dirty boost to give like the signal some push and to give it a little bit of crunch. And I this is my always on pedal, I never turn it off. It's, that's my main clean sound. It's, it's a little bit dirty, um, but you know, if I'm not digging into the strings, then uh, then it cleans up nice too. From there on, uh, going into the Seymour Duncan 805, which is like a Tube Screamer style pedal. Um, nice thing about this is it's got the three band EQ, so you can really dial in your tone. I love that, that's, you know, like that's where like my main crunch tone comes in. I use that a lot for like bigger parts, but where we're not going like way over the top. When I do want to go over the top, I just got this guy. I want to give a shout out to Offensive Audio. This pedal is amazing. Um, it's got two modes. One's kind of just like a really gnarly distortion. The other one's like ultra compressed. Um, sounds like fuzz, but it's got a really tight low end. And uh, I'm excited. I haven't brought it out on tour yet, but I'm definitely going to use it. Um, then rolling into the Walrus uh, Julia Chorus, which is my favorite chorus pedal. Um, generally use it on just the regular chorus setting, but the vibrato is really cool too. And uh, we use it a bit on the latest record. Um, then just a simple Boss DD6. I love this pedal, it's my favorite delay and I've been using it for 10, some, like 10 plus years. Um, no other delay that I've played sounds as good and this one's weird because you have to hold it to get into the tap tempo feature um, 
I've gotten used to it when we're playing live. I'm always I'm always sitting on that thing to turn it on or turn it off, but it's become second nature to me, and I I don't think I'll ever get rid of that pedal. Um, then I got the Electro Harmonics Memory Toy, which is super nice analog delay. I generally use it uh, when it's like an ambient part, uh, have the feedback set pretty high, and the blend, you know, pretty much in like unison, um, so that the signal is, you know, pretty washed out. And then finally, and just got the Boss RV5 and. Nine times out of ten, I'm using the modulate setting. I think it sounds really lush and really full. And then on like one or two songs, I switch it to the spring setting, which sounds really nice too. And uh, that's it for pedals. Oh, and I got the One Spot Pro um, for my power supply. That thing's awesome. Got a lot of options. It's got dip switches on the bottom to, to switch the voltage or the, yeah. Um, to switch the voltage uh, for different power and uh, definitely use that quite a bit. And then finally, uh, the amp and cab. So this amp's cool. Uh, Electro Harmonics a couple years ago reissued basically the Sovtech MiG-50, um, which MiG-50 sounds awesome. The only problem was a lot of like the hardware, the knobs, the switches were all plastic, so Electro Harmonics changed it to, you know, all metal, uh, made it more durable. This amp's amazing and it's so cheap. I think I paid like 550 or 600 bucks for it, and uh, it sounds incredible. 50 watts, so you get nice headroom, and then uh, it's got the two inputs. I generally use the number two, which is kind of like a like a higher gain. Uh, like lead boost channel and then going into my orange cab which is loaded with V30s um, and I love this cab it's like 16 ply birch or something so you get a really tight focused sound and I really like the mid-range push that uh, the V30s give it and yeah I guess the only other thing is uh, the trusty Evo, you can't be in a post-rock band without one of these. And uh, yeah, that's my rig. Cool, so I'm gonna show you guys my basses. Um, this is my American Deluxe Fender P bass. I've had it for about probably 15 to 18 years. Can't remember exactly, I think it's 18 years now. Um, I'm really stoked about it because I've used it on every record. I've um, Literally, it's been my touring bass, it's been my recording bass, one of them. And uh, I just got Seymour Duncan pickups in it. I got quarter pounders up in the front, NYC's in the back. Um, there, It's such a great combo and I have a preamp somewhere shoved in there. And uh, yeah, sounds awesome as a uh, P bass for sure. And then um, over here, we've got my Mike Lowell. It's a custom shop. Uh, it's got Lindy Freelands in, up in them, which are amazing, you know, hand wound. Everything's custom. I got this uh, custom scooped just for my hands because I t tend to do some stuff up there. And yeah, it's I love this bass. I mainly only use it for recording because it was pretty pricey and I'd rather not take it on the road. So those are my basses. Those are what I use. Um, I use. The Adaria uh, XLs, the 45 to 105s. That's, you know, it's a regular light top, uh, medium bottom. So for me, it's perfect. And I've been using these for, I don't know, eight years. So I love the Adaria. Um, so I guess I'm going to go to show you my pedal board. Um, all right. So my whole rig is very kind of being reset up right now. I just got these new Seymour Duncan stuff, which I'm figuring out. I'll probably have to rearrange or either get a new pedal board or take some stuff off. I don't know yet. But um, down here, this depth charge, this is, uh, you hear this on all the new Tide stuff from Young and Courageous into Every Nothing. And it's this fuzz that I randomly found on my birthday, actually. 
um, and they don't make it anymore and you can't find it and uh, if you do find it on eBay it's like a $500 FUDS so if anybody wants to recreate it please hit me up because that would be great um, then I'm running through my whole signal chain is the tuner to the compressor to the micro synth to the fuzz which this is just a on and off switch for the fuzz it's got a light so I can see it because I never had a light before and these guys just hooked me up with this uh, pedal literally over the weekend so I'm really stoked on it um, from here from my fuzz circuit it's going into my Julia into my delay and then out my reverb and yeah that's my whole board um, regarding this pedal this is a switch for my dark glass which is up here and this amp is literally changed my life changed my playing literally love this company um, about two years ago I was playing the SVT4 Pro which I love Ampeg don't get me wrong Ampeg is amazing I just uh, had a personal problem and got too heavy so I was looking for another amp and I found this company and they were just incredible I could get every tone I wanted out of it and yeah so I contacted Dark Glass and they gave me an artist deal and it was awesome so super stuck on Dark Glass um, then I'm running this Ampeg 610 which um, I used to run an 810 with uh, it was like a special as the Ampeg Ultra 810 and it was like it was a freaking monster uh, it weighed about 200 pounds to carry and uh, I kind of started to hate it especially when I wasn't touring as much so I downsized to the 610 and I found that it sounded better it suited my playing style it was everything I wanted so and it was a lot lighter so stoked on it and uh, yeah that's pretty much my whole rig um, anything else um, yeah I can't live without this Julia chorus from Walrus Audio I mean this thing was like a big component part of my um, sound on this new record as well as MXR's reverb uh, this boss delay which I love and now I'm getting into this uh, new Seymour Duncan stuff so very excited about it and yeah that's my whole touring and recording rig so there you go all right cool so I'm gonna walk you through my rig here um, we'll start with the guitars I'll show you this one first this is a new one I just got um, a new old one uh, I found this on eBay I was looking for um, a solid body Gibson with some cool humbuckers and stumbled across this model it was made from I think 73 to 81 or something it's the L6S and it's got a six-way selector switch which it does a lot of stuff that I don't even know yet but um, there's some like out of phase options you can get it to sound like a Strat you know coil tapping it's a really versatile guitar and uh, I just picked this up um, the frets were pretty worn down so I got a whole refret job done at 7C Music over in St. Pete and they put in these low profile stainless steel frets which I'm really in love with and this thing just plays like a dream so it's very very cool I love this guitar still testing it out still figuring it out but it's awesome and then <laughs> this is my main touring guitar I've had this thing literally since pretty much the beginning of Tides of Man. It's been kind of beat up, dropped a few times. It's definitely got some gunk in there, but um, this is a 91 Fender Telecaster. And it's an American standard. And I swapped out the pickups a while ago <clears throat> with uh, 51 No Casters. And I, I, I had some Texas Specials in here before, but then it didn't really work out. It wasn't the tone I was looking for. And I found these 51 no casters. They're Fender pickups, and they, they sound great. I haven't changed them ever since. The only other thing I've done to this guitar is just change out the tuners with these um, Planet Waves tuners. They have this locking mechanism in the back, which tightens the string and then actually cuts it off. So you don't have to do that annoying thing where you have to cut the string off. So that's pretty cool. And then we go to my pedal board here. Um, okay, cool. So 
I've been messing around with this thing for a while, trying to find a bunch of different pedals, and things kind of come on and off here, but this is my current setup. Uh, I got a Dunlop volume pedal, um, which goes to tuner out, so my tuner is usually always on. This is a Diodario tuner they just hooked me up with. And uh, <clears throat> the signal chain is straight to the Walrus Julia. We use this a lot on the new record. Um, it's got like a, you can switch between dry and full vibrato uh, signal. And so you can create like a warped vinyl kind of feel all the way to just straight 80s chorus sounds. And that goes into the carbon copy delay from MXR which I use is like just a underneath tone for lushness and analog delay uh, into the OCD full tone into the Warhorn uh, Walrus. This is a nice overdrive pedal and this one is like my main overdrive pedal. I just put it on as kind of like a clean boost with a little more dirt um, and then when I really want to kick things off I actually just stack it with this before it which makes it turn it to basically distortion. And then that goes into my reverb and delay section, which um, this is my main reverb pedal. It's a Strymon Blue Sky. I've had this thing forever. It's just a beast. Um, I got like my normal uh, delay sound, which is a normal room sound. Sometimes I use the mod. I did use the shimmer for a while, but I've kind of phased out of that. And then it's got a favorite switch, which is my really ambient sounds. And then I just got hooked up from Seymour Duncan with this dynamic delay. It's called the Andromeda. And I'm still learning this thing. It's like, it's pretty amazing. But um, I think it's got like 100 presets or something you can save. You can hook it up to your computer. It's like next level. So I'm definitely still learning this. But the cool thing about this pedal <clears throat> that I really like is that you can set it to where the delay is more prominent when you're playing softer and then when you hit like a rhythm part you play your guitar harder it kind of ducks down has some compression connected to it and that goes straight into the Silver Lake which is their reverb pedal which also has that dynamic expression and again a lot of presets there so I'm still learning these two pedals but I really really love them and I feel like I can I can almost get rid of most of the stuff on my board and just have a um, a, a distortion section in those and it would be fine. And then um, that goes to the Holy Grail which I usually leave on on a spring reverb just to keep like a nice uh, little room sound. And then into the, I just got this pedal too, this is a Jam Man um, looper. Sometimes I'll loop a part in between songs or I'll, I'll use it to play an extra part because Especially on Young and Courageous, we had mostly three guitar parts, so this comes in a lot uh, in our set. And that's my pedal board. And then I'll go to my amp section here. This is uh, Orange OR15. I've been playing this for a while. The reason why I like this amp the most is because it's only 15 watts. And when you're playing club shows and stuff like that, um, you know, you don't you can crank it and you can still get it pretty loud and get the full tone out of it without being asked to be turned down by the sound guy. So that's really nice. It's just a simple single channel amp, you know, bass, mids, treble, volume, and gain. I run it at the edge of breakup and then I use my pedals for the rest. And then that goes into this orange open back 2x12 cab, which I just started using, which sounds great. Dan plays a uh, closed back cab but I like a more open sound a more vintage sound so I use the open back and those two tones together really fit nicely so that's my setup um, yeah there you go what up Tides of Man thank you for checking out our rigged feature on Gear Gods we've got a brand new album out called Every Nothing check it out thank you guys <laughs> <laughs>